Se le Digo una cosa, hay una de All right, so a very good evening to all of you and uh, I welcome you all to this particular session of test and discussion on pulmonology. So I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba, I am the general medicine educator on this Unacademy platform. So what is that we will be doing in the next half an hour? So first important thing is I will be showing you the x-rays of all the respiratory disorders, right? I will be showing you the x-rays of all the respiratory disorders, wherein I will also be telling you the very important findings, right? The very important findings of that particular x-ray related to that particular disorder. And second important thing is I will be also making you to solve some of the image based questions and as well as multiple choice questions. So that will be the theme of this particular session. So yes, all of you, is my voice audible to all of you? Right. Now we will start with the session. So the first question is, the question is related to your COPD. This is a very, very important question that is gold criteria, right? So gold criteria for very severe COPD is defined as Fe1 by FBC less than 0.7 and less than 80%, less than 70%, less than 50%, less than 30%. So what according to is your gold criteria, we call it as very severe COPD, right? Very good. So some of you are answering this question very greatly and uh, yeah, so the answer to this particular question is D. Fe even less than 30% is what is considered under very severe COPD. Now let me show you, right, very good. So everyone, it is not C, some of you are in Sarojini, it is not less than 50%, it is less than 30%, right? Now this is the table for that, right? Okay, so you take the, mild, how much should be that? FEV1 will be more than 80%. Moderate, you reduce it by 30, that is 50 to 79. Severe, you reduce it again by 20, so that becomes 30 to 49%. And very severe is less than 30%. So it is very simple to remember, right? So mild, it should be more than 80% then you reduce it by 30, then you reduce it by 20, and then very severe, right, very severe, we call it as less than 30%, right? Next. Now, uh, yes, Avinash, more than 80%, we don't call it as normal. Like normal FEV1, we consider it as almost 95 to 100%. Right, we consider it as 95 to 100%, okay? So even yes, sir, more than 80% means it can be 95 to 100% also. That is a genuine point. But in all the stages, Fe even by FVC will be less than 0.7. You take in the normal individual. In normal individual, how much is F, your Fe even by FVC? It is 0.7. But in all the stages, Fe even by FVC will be less than 0.7. And Fe even in stage one will be more than 80% or more than or equal to 80%, okay? Right. Yes, you see this very important question, uh, image-based question. The following CT chest shows the presence of emphysema, artifact, silicosis, pneumo-ultra microscopic silicovolcanosis. Yes, please attempt this particular question. Right, so some of you are answering this question, just one second. Just give me one minute, yeah. Right, so the answer to this particular question is the emphysema. Hmm? 
Hmm? The answer to this particular question is emphysema. Now, how can you say that that is an emphysema? Now, you can see this particular, the hyper intense black color pockets. These are the emphysematous bulla. Right? These are your emphysematous bulla. Okay? So, there are, you have many pockets like that. You have many pockets like that. Right? So, all these, they are suggestive of your what is called emphysema. So, the following CT chest shows the presence of your emphysema. Right? And what are the findings? That are hyperlucent lung fields. And that hyperlucent lung fields, they are in the form of pockets. That is what is being suggestive of your emphysema. Right? Next, we will move on to the next question. Which are the drugs used for smoking cessation? Clonidine, bupropion, varniclin, all of the above. Which of the following drugs are used for smoking cessation? Right, very good. So all of the above. Now out of this, can anyone tell me which are first line drugs? Which are first line drugs for smoking cessation? Anyone? Which are your first line drugs for smoking cessation? Can anyone answer this? Very good, uh, Sarojini. So, varnitin, this is considered as the first line agent for smoking cessation. Whereas, right, very good. So, whereas you take this clonidine and as well as nortriptyline, these two, they are considered as the second line agents for smoking cessation. Right? They are considered as second line agents for smoking cessation. The first line is your varnitin. Right? Next. Yeah. In a patient with COPD with low SpO2 at rest, what is the best management option? What is the best management option? <coughs> right. So... Right, so Sarojini has answered this question. Very good, Sarojini. The answer is low flow oxygen. See, the individual is having low saturation at rest. So, definitely you need to supplement the patient with the low flow oxygen. So, low flow oxygen is the best management option in this particular patient. So, if the individual is not being supplemented with oxygen, the individual will have hypoxia and the individual may suffer from what is called as the type 1 respiratory failure. So, in order to prevent the development of this type 1 respiratory failure, you need to supplement the low flow oxygen to the patient. Right? So, the answer to this particular question is C. Right? And you take the next question. This is a very, very important question and most of the students, they get confused with this question. In patients with history, with smoking history, which is important? Is it duration of smoking? Is it number of smoking, brand of smoking or is it filter of the smoking? What is important? Right, very good Kapil. So Kapil has answered this question first. Very good, excellent. So remember, it is not the number of cigarettes what you are smoking is important. It is the duration of smoking. So that is very important in the patient's smoking history. Right, very important, take this point. Right, next, we will move on to the next question. The emphysema, it presents with all except Cyanosis, barrel shaped chest associated with smoking, type 1 respiratory failure. The question asked is except. And let me tell you all, at the end of all these questions, I will be explaining you or I will be discussing x-rays. I will discuss all the x-rays related to the pulmonary, the pulmonary disorders. So, just be tuned with me until last so that you will get the advantage of being discussed about the x-rays of various pulmonary disorders. So, the answer, right. So, the very good, that is, it is cyanosis. So, emphysema will not have cyanosis. So, which part of COPD you will have cyanosis? It is in patients with a chronic bronchitis. Right, that is in patients with a chronic bronchitis, they'll have this particular cyanosis. Whereas emphysema patients, they are considered as pink puffers. Right, they are considered as pink puffers. There is no cyanosis in these individuals. 
okay and barrel shaped chest will be there because of the bilateral hyperuse and lung fields and emphysema yes it will be associated with smoking and these emphysematous patients they will develop what is called as type 1 respiratory failure where they have hypoxia right where they have hypoxia okay whereas you take in patients with a chronic bronchitis chronic bronchitis patients they will have hypoxia and as well as hypercapnia so that is the reason why chronic bronchitis patients of COPD they will develop what is called type 2 respiratory failure right they will develop what is called type 2 respiratory failure okay right now we will move on to the next question yes which component of the cigarette smoking is responsible for the development of the coronary artery disease is it nicotine is it tar is it polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is it benzene which component of cigarette smoking is responsible for the causing coronary artery disease right so okay so no i did not get the correct answer from any one of you right but it's okay let me tell you this is a completely new point what you people are learning now and the answer is d so benzene the component benzene uh, of cigarette smoking is the one which is responsible for the development of your coronary artery disease right now let me tell you it is the answer is benzene okay right now let me tell you what are all the various components of cigarette smoking and uh, what are their effects let me show you that right we have a substance called acetaldehyde or anabasin in cigarette smoking and remember this a for acetaldehyde a for addictive so the smokers they are very much addicted to smoking why is that that is because of the presence of anabasin or acetaldehyde next you have benzene so benzene and as well as benzopyrene so after b what is the letter you will get in your alphabets that is c so remember your benzene and benzopyrene they are carcinogenic right they are carcinogenic and out of that you take benzene it is cardiotoxic and it also has reproductive potential toxicity so all those individuals whoever are smokers mainly think of this particular effect that is reproductive potential toxicity and let me tell you one of the very very important point smoking is associated with erectile dysfunction so please take care of that and see that the reproductive potential toxicity you will not develop right next carbon monoxide it is associated with the reproductive potential toxicity vinyl chloride which is present in the smoking that is also carcinogenic so the products in the cigarette smoke are acetaldehyde which is addictive benzene that is carcinogenic and cardiotoxic and reproductive potential toxicity benzopyrene carcinogenic carbon monoxide reproductive potential toxicity vinyl chloride it is carcinogenic right so very very important please take care of this okay so smoking causes all the cancers except except liver cancer oral cancer kidney cancer bladder cancer yes right so answer to this particular question is right sk rai has answered this question only rai has answered very good rai excellent so it is liver cancer smoking is not associated with the liver cancer smoking will cause all the cancers oral cancer kidney cancer and as well as bladder cancer very good avinash has also answered this question and the answer is a liver cancer is not associated with the smoking right a patient comes with sudden respiratory distress on examination there is bilateral basal crepitations which are present over the chest and which is suggestive of pulmonary edema and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure was mentioned and that is normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and what is the likely cause in this individual narcotic overdose congestive heart failure myocardial infarction cardiogenic shock so what do you think is the likely cause in this individual right so manasa answers 3 okay any other right 
Yes. So, yes, very good, Avinash. So, Avinash has answered this question correctly, and the answer is narcotic overdose. Okay. So, first of all, you should know what is the diagnosis. What is the diagnosis in this individual? The diagnosis in this individual is ARDS, that is acute respiratory distress syndrome. ARDS is the diagnosis in this individual. So now in ARDS, like why ARDS? Because normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is there and as well as pulmonary edema is there. Now you take all these three conditions, congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, cardiogenic shock, all these are the conditions where there is increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Right, where there is increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So that is the reason why the 2, 3, 4 are not the correct answer. It is only the narcotic overdose which can cause ARDS and which makes the individual to land up in pulmonary edema is the answer to this particular question. Right? Okay. Next. Right, very important question. Okay, I'll come back to this question. In the, okay, now only we will discuss. Which of the following statements regarding the differentiation between Cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema is true. A bad wing or butterfly appearance on the chest x-ray is more typical of non-cardiogenic than cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Second option, distinct air bronchograms are more common with the cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Wide vascular pedicle and increase in the cardiothoracic ratio suggest cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And fourth option, Pulmonary arterial catheterization will yield useful information in these patients and will decrease their overall mortality. So what do you think is the correct answer? Yes, and let me see who will answer this question first. Right, very good. So Avinash and as well as the SK Rai has answered this question. Both of you have answered this correctly and the answer is wide vascular pedicle and increase in the cardiothoracic ratio is suggestive of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Now let me try and explain about this uh, question. So you take this back wing or butterfly pattern. Back wing or butterfly pattern it is more suggestive of cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Right? You see this. Yeah, you see this. This is your back wing or the butterfly appearance. So this is suggestive of your cardiogenic pulmonary edema but not non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So the first option is completely an incorrect option. Next, the other important point is the presence of the air bronchograms. And let me tell you that the air bronchograms are more common in patients with non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. It is not in case of cardiogenic, it is in case of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, you have the presence of the air bronchograms, right? So your second option is also ruled out. And let me tell you, pulmonary arterial catheterization, that means you are putting an external catheter into the pulmonary artery, they will increase the chance of mortality. Right? They will increase the chance of mortality. See what is that given here? Decrease their overall mortality, which is an incorrect statement. Keeping a pulmonary artery catheter, uh, which will give you a useful information, will increase the mortality of the individual. Right? Because it's an external catheter. It's an invasive procedure. So that is the reason why it will increase the mortality of the individual. Whereas, the presence of wide vascular pedicle, that tells you that there is increase in the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. So, where do you have increase in pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? You will have that in patients with the cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Right? You will have that in patients with the cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So, remember a wide vascular pedicle and increase in cardiogenic, cardiothoracic ratio, it suggests cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Right? So, that is a correct statement. Option C is your correct statement. Okay? Then we will move on to the next question. Right, and in patients with the, this is the chest x-ray of your ARDS. We call this ARDS lung as white out lung. What they will have is diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. Right, what they will have is diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrates. Yes, uh, Avinash, you are correct. The presence of air bronchograms, they are very classically seen in case of lobar pneumonia. Air bronchograms, they are classically seen in patients with a lobar pneumonia. Right? So, this is your ARDS lung, which is also called white out lung. 
Now, yes, this is a very, very important uh, question. A car accident patient complains of breathlessness. On examination, BP is 110 by 70, GCS is 15 by 15. On examination, trachea shows deviation in the suprasternal notch with reduced breath sounds in the left infra axillary area and infra mammary area. And first and second heart sounds are normal in intensity and as well as splitting, right? And chest x ray shows which is below, right? What is the best step in the management of this patient? Needle aspiration, pericardiocentesis, chest tube insertion, immediate thoracotomy. So, what is that you need you want to do? Avinash, you want to do uh, immediate thoracotomy. Okay, so Manik says you want to do needle aspiration, right? No. Now, see, uh, yes, Avinash, if you are thinking that it's a tension pneumothorax, in tension pneumothorax, the breath sounds, they are completely absent. Right? Breath sounds are completely absent in your tension pneumothorax. But what is given here? It is only reduced breath sounds. And the individual had a car accident. So, what is that you need to suspect? Right? Very good. Lissy has answered this question. Very good, Dr. Lissy. Excellent. Yes, Lissy, what is that you are suspecting? Why you want to do chest tube insertion in this patient? Why you want to do chest tube insertion, Lissy? Yes, SKRI, you are also correct. Right. So, this particular patient... After the car accident, let me tell you, suffering with what is called very good Vasavi. Vasavi has answered this question. Excellent Vasavi. So, that is your hemothorax. So, the individual has developed hemothorax. And that is the reason why you are having reduced breath sounds. And that is the reason why your trachea is being shifted to the opposite side. Right? So, the individual is not developed pneumothorax. And that is the reason why needle aspiration has been put as a first option. Right? In case of pneumothorax or tension pneumothorax, you will have a silent chest or the breath sounds are completely absent. So, that one important point is going against your pneumothorax and even you can see the chest x-ray also. Like in case of, okay, I will show you the chest x-ray of your pneumothorax. It is not like what it will appear what you are having now. I will show you the x-ray of your pneumothorax in another one or two minutes. Okay, we will move on to the next question. Right. What is the most common cause of the spontaneous pneumothorax, tuberculosis, rupture of subpleural bleb, bronchogenic carcinoma, bronchial adenoma. So, what is the most common cause of spontaneous pneumothorax? Right, very good. So, yes, Srinivas Yelala has answered this. So, the answer is rupture of the subpleural bleb. That is the most common cause of the pneumothorax. Yes, very good. Everyone is answering. Yes, Avinash, it is not tuberculosis. It is the rupture of the subpleural bleb, which is the most common cause of spontaneous pneumothorax. Remember that very, very important point. Right. Haman crunch sign is seen in Haman Rich syndrome, aortic aneurysm, pneumomediastinum, pneumothorax. Where do you see this Haman's crunch sign? Yes, right, uh, no, I am not getting the correct answer. Yes, Dr. Lissi has answered, very good Lissi and Vasavi, both of you have answered this. The answer is pneumomediastinum. So, in patients with pneumomediastinum, what is that? There is presence of air in the mediastinum. That is what is called as pneumomediastinum. So, to this particular pocket of air, Right to this particular pocket of air which is present in the mediastinum, the heart will be beating against this particular air. With every systole and diastole, the heart will come in contact with the air which is present within the mediastinum. And when you auscultate, it, you will get a crunching sign, and that is what is called as crunching sound, and that is what is called as the Haman's crunch sign. Right? So, can anyone tell me what is this Haman Rich syndrome? What is Haman Rich syndrome? Yes, Haman Rich syndrome, it is a type of interstitial lung disease, right? It is a type of interstitial lung disease. So, remember that very, very important point, right? 
tension pneumothorax results in all of the following except respiratory alkalosis decreased cardiac output decreased venous return absent breath sounds tension pneumothorax results in all except right very good so yes aman ahmed has answered this very good aman so the answer is respiratory alkalosis so what is that they will have in patients with the tension pneumothorax is the carbon dioxide wash up does not occur and these individuals they can have what is called respiratory acidosis right they can have what is called respiratory acidosis so tension pneumothorax results in all except the answer is respiratory alkalosis and in pneumothorax venous return will be reduced and because of which the there will be decreased cardiac output and breath sounds they are completely absent in patients with your tension pneumothorax right now yes this is another very very important question bilateral malignant pleural effusion is most often seen in yes bilateral malignant pleural effusion is most often seen in very good srinivas and as well as yokesh right the answer is mesothelioma so in mesothelioma you will have bilateral malignant pleural effusion in the remaining all conditions like carcinoma breast carcinoma lung and as well as lymphoma what you can have is unilateral malignant pleural effusion it is not bilateral so bilateral malignant pleural effusion is seen in patients with a mesothelioma so remember this very very important point right next now now we will move on to the chest x rays of all the pathological conditions in the pulmonology now can anyone tell me where do you get this hamptons hump what is the condition where you will have the hamptons hump right so hamptons hump it is the condition not in congestive heart failure yes vasavi has answered that that you see in patients with the pulmonary embolism Mm, you will see that in patients with a pulmonary embolism now what is that this is a wedge shaped infarct right it's a wedge shaped infarct which is distal to the blocked vessel that is what is called as hamptons hump right next i'll just show you one more x ray finding this is also the chest x ray in pulmonary embolism right this is also the chest x ray in pulmonary embolism so can anyone tell me what is this right what is this chest x ray suggest you of a very good doctor you see this is nothing but your palas sign right this is your palas sign in the pulmonary embolism now what is palas sign this is enlarged right descending pulmonary artery hmm? it is enlarged right descending pulmonary artery that is what is called as the palas sign right that is what is called as palas sign okay right then i'll just show you one more x ray right now this is the site of pathology and this is also seen in patients with the pulmonary embolism can anyone tell me what is this sign right so this is nothing but your western mark sign now what is your western mark sign western mark sign it is pulmonary oligemia right it is the pulmonary oligemia not it is not pleural effusion hmm? it is not pleural effusion right it is focal oligemia in pleural effusion what is that you will notice in pleural effusion you will notice blunting of the costophrenic angle you don't have a blunt here you you can see that this is your costophrenic angle that is normal so it is just only focal oligemia suggestive of your western mark sign okay so now what is the diagnosis of this particular x ray that is number 1 and what is the diagnosis of this particular x ray number 2 so what is your number 
right so number one is your pleural effusion right that is your pleural effusion so let me tell you in pleural effusion the earliest sign is blunting of the costophrenic angle right the earliest sign is blunting of the costophrenic angle and you will have a curve or you have a sign this is called as ls s shaped curve right this is called as ls s shaped curve or this is also called meniscus sign right this is also called meniscus sign okay yes what is number 2 right lisi has answered this very good lisi and as well as kapil both of you have answered this so you have this horizontal fluid level this horizontal fluid level they are seen in patients with hydropneumothorax right horizontal fluid level they are seen in patients with the hydropneumothorax okay right then we will move on to the next x ray yeah so this is the x ray of your pneumothorax so what is that you will see in the x ray of the pneumothorax is number 1 absence of bronchovascular markings bronchovascular markings will be completely absent in patients with the pneumothorax and what will happen to the lung lung is collapsed right lung is collapsed and trachea will be shifted to the opposite side right trachea will be shifted to the opposite side that is what you will see in patients with the pneumothorax absence of bronchovascular markings collapsed lung and trachea being shifted to the opposite side right next yeah what is the diagnosis here okay so tell me what are the findings in this x ray and what will be the differential diagnosis what is the finding in this particular x ray and what will be your differential diagnosis right very good yes lissy and as well as avinash both of you have answered this correctly and uh, yes even vasavi also so this is suggests you of your bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy right bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy so bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy so where is that you will see you will see that in patients with the sarcoidosis right you will see that in patients with the sarcoidosis right yeah you you when even you can see here the 1 2 3 sign even your paratracheal lymph node is also enlarged hmm? right that is nothing but your lambda sign yes Hmm, that is nothing but your lambda sign right correct yeah now what is the diagnosis and what are the findings yes see in this particular x ray what you can make out is you can make out the presence of the patchy consolidation you are having this consolidation but patchy consolidation now what is the condition where you will have this patchy consolidation you will come across this particular patchy consolidation no it is not interstitial lung disease you will have this in patients with the bronchopneumonia right so the findings whatever you are having here is patchy consolidation so this patchy consolidation you will come across in patients with the bronchopneumonia right that's a very important point now yes um uh, yeah now what is this pattern and where you will come across this yes dr lc and as well as vasavi now you answer this uh, uh, x ray what is this pattern and what is the condition you will come across right so this is the this is what is called as interstitial pattern right this is what is nothing but your interstitial pattern so you can have this in patients with the ild interstitial lung disease you can have this in patients with the interstitial pneumonia as well right you can have this in patients with the interstitial pneumonia as well so this is what is called as the interstitial pattern right and either you take interstitial lung disease or interstitial pneumonia the type of cough you will have is dry cough 
right? The type of cough, what you'll have is dry cough, okay? Now, can anyone tell me what are the bacteria which will cause interstitial pneumonia? Bacteria which will cause interstitial pneumonia, anyone? Bacteria causing interstitial pneumonia. Right, very good Avinash. So remember it as MLC, right? So it is not your member of legislative council, it is mycoplasma, legionella and as well as chlamydia. Yes, Nitish, you said Klebsiella. Klebsiella will cause lobar pneumonia, Nitish. And even SK Rai, Klebsiella will not cause interstitial pneumonia, it will cause lobar pneumonia, right? So please remember regarding the Klebsiella. Okay, now, now you see this particular x-ray, you have this what is called as ground glass appearance. Can anyone tell me what is the organism in which you will have ground glass appearance in the x-ray? Right, okay, CML, yes Avinash, you can remember it as CML as well. Now, this is not COPD. This is not COPD. It is your ground glass appearance. Right. So, ground glass appearance, you will come across in patients with a PCP pneumonia or we also call it as pneumocystis gerovaceae pneumonia. Right. Which you come across in patients with infected with HIV. Right. So, PCP pneumonia or PJP pneumocystis gerovaceae pneumonia is the one where you come across this ground glass appearance. Okay. Now, diagnosis here. Diagnosis, please. This is a very, very important x-ray. And these individuals, he presented with septic shock. Right, he presented with septic shock. Yes, Srinivas, even in ARDS also you can have ground glass appearance. Yes, Srinivas, you are correct. Right, so this is the x-ray suggests you of your lung abscess. Hmm? You can see that this is a very thick wall. This is a very thick wall which is present around the abscess. Right, which is a thick wall which is present around the abscess. Okay, so that is the chest x-ray suggests you of your lung abscess. Then, yeah, what is this x-ray suggestive of diagnosis? What is this x-ray suggestive of? Yes. Right. So, this particular x-ray is suggestive of, now you can see that you are having blebs. You are having hyperlucent lung fields and you are having a tubular heart and you are having a low set diaphragm. All these are suggestive of, yes Vasavi, Vasavi has answered that correctly, very good. So that is suggestive of your emphysema, right, that is suggestive of your emphysema, right. So in emphysema, you will have bilateral hyperlucent lung fields, tubular heart, Right, you will have the emphysematous bulla and low set diaphragm. These are all the features suggest you of your emphysematous lung. Right, okay. Then we will move on to the next x ray. Yeah, so this is the x ray suggest you of chronic bronchitis. Now, what is that you will have in chronic bronchitis is there will be increased bronchovascular markings. Right? There will be increased bronchovascular markings. So that is what you will see in the chronic bronchitis chest x-ray. Right? Increased bronchovascular markings. Right? Now, the last one. Yeah. What is the diagnosis of this particular x-ray? Yes. The tram track sign, where do you get the tram track sign? Right, very good Avinash. So this is what is suggestive of your bronchiectasis. 
right this is what is suggestive of your bronchiectasis so presence of tram track sign is seen in case of bronchiectasis okay so this completes the discussion of almost all the x rays right yeah so this completes the discussion of all the x rays related to your pulmonary pathologies so this is one of a very short session related to your test and discussion for your central exams right so thank you very much for attending these particular sessions and again at 7 pm today at 7 pm today i have the session on an academy So please attend. What is that session? The AIMS exam you have written on Sunday. Right? You have written AIMS exam on Sunday. Right? So this particular exam which was being conducted on Sunday, the AIMS exam. So I will be discussing the general medicine questions of that particular AIMS exam. Right, I'll be discussing the general medicine questions related to your AIMS exam, which has been conducted on Sunday, the last Sunday. Right, so all of you please attend at 7 pm, wherein you will be having a very interactive session there also. Right, so thank you very much. Yes, Avinash, thank you very much. Right, so see you at 7 pm now.